Well, hey everyone, Jason here at Alorium Technology. And in this video, I wanna start providing a little bit of detail or a little more information about how we are architecting the FPGA and our new Evo M51 board. Now, we're really excited about this thing and we're, we're getting close to be able to start production. We are waiting for our PCBs to get in and we've got the bill of materials on order. We're doing some of the finalization on some of the FPGA architecture and software support libraries and things like that. And uh, the clearer it's becoming in terms of all the details of how these things, these two chips, the SAMD and the FPGA are gonna work together, the more I wanna be able to start sharing that information with you because the team is doing some pretty cool stuff to make this as easy as possible for you to use and take advantage of the FPGA fabric. So you can take advantage of the, the performance and the acceleration and all the cool things that come along with using an FPGA. So what I wanna do in this video is introduce some of the things or concepts that we're using on the FPGA that'll make it easier for you to drop your own logic in there. And so you can kind of understand how it plays with the SAMD on the Evo M51 board. So let's jump into this presentation that I've got and we'll spend a little bit more time talking about that with some visuals so we can hopefully give you an idea of how this works. Okay, a few weeks ago, we released a teaser video introducing Evo M51. And in that video, one of the features we pointed out was the fact that all of the digital I.O. from the SAMD is actually running through or are running through the FPGA, both for inputs and for outputs. And this includes the standard pin or via digital I.O., as well as all the ca additional castellated vias that we provide as part of the Evo. And if you remember, um, we provide all of the standard I.O. We chose the feather footprint for this board, and so we provide all the standard digital I.O. found in the uh, standard feather footprint, as well as an additional 34 or digital I.O. in the form of just castellated vias. Now, all of the standard I.O. also have a castellated via, which each one of those, um, but you get an additional 34 I.O. just as castellated vias as well. And that's really cool because what it allows you to do is you can use this just like a standard feather style board where you can run the data in and out if you don't want to do anything special with it in the FPGA and it'll pass right through the FPGA and it, it'll it essentially it's like it's not there. But uh, of course, if you're buying this board, you're going to want to use the FPGA for something probably. So if you have an accelerator block, either something that we provide or maybe one that you've designed on your own, then you can actually arrest those signals either on the way out or as they're coming in or before you know hitting the SAMD or maybe you don't go to the SAMD at all and you just work with those signals right on the FPGA. So what I want to show you in this particular video is start to give you an idea of how that's actually working internally on the Max 10 and how we're interacting with the SAMD a little bit so you can start to form a mental picture of how that is going to work. So let's take a closer look at the architecture and sort of the block diagram inside the Max 10 itself. And what I want to do is start by introducing this idea of this Evo BSP. Now BSP stands for Board Support Package, and it's essentially a collection of modules and blocks that we've put together in its own layer of hierarchy that allow us to be able to make this easy to use and, and interface for you if you're designing some of your custom logic, and even for ourselves as we're designing accelerator blocks and, and releasing images that provide certain functions and functionality for our customers. Now what we're really trying to do here is create an environment where it's easy to bridge that gap between the SAMD processor and the board I.O. so that you can take advantage of the FPGA fabric in a relatively easy way. So let's look at a really simple example, the most basic example, and that is the standard D pins that you have on a feather. Now, if you think about, a, a like a take the Feather M4 Express from Adafruit, for example, uh, all of the standard D pins or data pins that they bring out is what we call D pins. If you look here on the right-hand side of this block diagram, uh, you'll see these D pins or castellated vias. That's what the CB stands for because again, all of the data pins that we have also are pinned out to castellated vias on the board. Um, between the SAMD and the MAX-10, we refer to that bus as the F bus or the F pins. And so there's this F port between SAMD and MAX-10. And in order to uh, transition or pass those through, it goes through a block called D to F. It's also, we call it, I like to call it an IO pass-through controller or the IO pass-through control block. And what this allows us to do is to be able to kind of configure the, that interface, you know, so we can say, well, is the, are these inputs? Are they outputs? You know, how are these working? And, uh, and this is all controlled from the code that you would write within your 
you know, your code that you put on the SAMD and, and we've got our own library and we just make it so that, you know, if you set a pin as an output, uh, there's a bunch of stuff kind of happening under the covers. So that just automatically happens on the FPGA. You don't have to do really anything, any special yet. You don't have to do really anything special to make that happen. Now, the way that actually works in practice is there is a unique I squared C bus or a special I squared C bus between the Evo FPGA and the SAMD uh, for doing this kind of configuration. And this I squared C bus gets used for a whole lot of stuff between these two chips. So this isn't the I squared C that goes out to the outside world. That's of course available as well, but this is an isolated one just for communication and configuration between SAMD and MAX-10. And if we look at this pass-through control for the F to D ports or the D to F uh, module, this is really controlled through con the status registers or through configuration registers. And those are written through this I squared C. And again, that all kind of gets, that happens under the covers through our libraries. So if you, you know, you set a particular port or a particular pin as an output pin, there's library calls that pass this information and everything gets configured on the FPGA sort of under the covers so you don't have to worry about it. So that's sort of the most basic functionality. If you think about how to get from the SAMD to the outside world using just the data pins that are available to you from a standard feather type board. But of course we have additional pins on this is the Evo M51 and particularly with these additional 34 castellated vias that I mentioned, uh, those are hanging off what we call the E-bus or the E-port. And that is also, uh, you can get to those through this I squared C bus. You can get to that data through register reads and writes, just like any other port that you might use or get access to on a standard SAMD processor. Um, the, the, the access and the way you, the way that these IO are muxed are, are very, very similar to how you do that on a SAMD, the SAMD processor. We also have this G port. It's kind of using the term port makes it sound bigger than it is. It's actually only two pins, but we had the room for an additional two castellated vias so we added those and then that shows up under the g port in addition to that we have what we call the z bus now the z bus is a little bit unique in that it is a parallel 10-bit bus between the max 10 and the sam d and we did that to be able to provide some just sort of high speed data traffic back and forth from the sam d to the max 10 so that if there's certain things that customers want to do in parallel and be able to do some kind of, you know, direct right across, there's access to do that. And, and that bus actually goes, the I.O. that those are connected to on the SAMD um, are all I.O. that are part of the uh, parallel capture control logic or I.O. that are on the SAMD. I may not be using the, the exact right terminology there. But we'll, you know, we'll further refine uh, that description. So I apologize if I didn't have exactly the right terminology. But, um, but it's specifically designed to be able to do parallel transfers uh, f into the SAMD or out of the SAMD. So uh, that allows this unique interface between the two chips. And then, of course, we have a block that will allow us to do our flash load, which is the functionality that just like with all of our accelerate family of boards that allows you to update the FPGA image right across the serial bus, we'll have a very similar functionality that you can do with Evo M51 as well, where you'll be able to flash load the FPGA image uh, coming across the USB uh, by taking advantage of, of the SAM, uh, SAMD. And just like before, it'll be something that's that's really well encapsulated and gives you the ability to just upload a new image to the FPGA without having to have any JTAG hardware to do that. So that's that's coming along really, really well. So this is kind of the basic framework of how this is working. And, and it, it allows a lot of flexibility in how you can read and write these, these I.O., uh, because of the way that we've implemented sort of the user side for all of these data ports and the Z bus are very almost exactly the same as what's in the SAMD51 as well. So if you're familiar with writing code to be able to um, control this, the registers for reading and writing outputs on that, it'll make a lot of sense for doing it on the FPGA as well if you want to be able to write some of your own logic blocks or accelerator blocks to go on to the FPGA. Now, speaking of that, the rest of this area within the FPGA, and again, obviously these these blocks aren't designed to scale. It's not like this is actually how much of the FPGA these blocks take. It's just to represent it. But the rest of the FPGA fabric 
is available for you to be able to do your own custom stuff. Now, if you remember with uh, our Accelerate and Snow and Hinge boards, we had this concept, this met methodology that we called Open Accelerate, and we're going to have something similar with our Evo family of boards as well that we will probably call Open Evo, and it just is a way for you to be able to leverage the hierarchy that's here, easily stitch in an accelerator block or a custom logic block that you've designed into the FPGA fabric for this board and then be able to run it through sort of just like we did before where you can use Cordis for being able to synthesize it, but we'll make it you know very easy for you to step through that process. And then once again, be able to load that through the USB without necessarily having to worry about JTAG hardware. If you want to use JTAG, if you are uh, more of a power user and you're more familiar with that, you'll be able to do that as well. So that's a, an option that'll be open to you. But for those that don't want to do it, uh, it'll be easy to be able to walk through this process and then load it right through the USB interface. And so that is it for this video. I wanted to just provide that quick introduction to what the architecture is looking like on the FPGA. Uh, the team is, is trained, doing a great job of, of pulling this all together so that just like with Accelerate, just like with our snowboard, we wanna make FPGAs approachable, the FPGA that's on this board, easy for you to use and easy for you to integrate your own custom logic and having it sitting right next to that, that very powerful 32-bit micro that's in the SAMD51. So anyway, that is it for today. I hope that uh, this helps. If you have any questions, go ahead and uh, you can shoot us an email um, at support at aloriumtech.com or you can leave a comment here somewhere in the video, whether you're watching this uh, on YouTube or Facebook or wherever. I'm happy to be able to answer your questions. Love hearing uh, what you're doing and we will keep you all posted. Uh, if you haven't joined our email list yet, you can uh, go to lauriumtech.com and you can join up on our email alias also. And we'll let you know as soon as our Evo boards are ready to order and where you can you know, get a hold of those. So thanks for watching. Look forward to talking to you very soon.